Welcome to episode 30 of Created by Design. In this episode, I'm going to concentrate totally on making the chimpanzee with Lois Crowweather's design. And I'm going to start from the very beginning and I hope to record each section. So by the end of this episode, the chimpanzee will be fully knitted. Um, I don't think we'll have his clothes done. We'll do that on another episode. Uh, and I hope I get this all on one video. If it gets to be too long, I'll break it up into two videos. But I want to uh, start from the very beginning. What do I do? How do I choose my yarn? And um, what's the very first step? I've had so many wonderful questions by a number of you that are following me, uh, either on uh, Facebook and or through YouTube. And so that makes it fun for me, and I'm gonna to try to answer some of those questions. So um, whether you are knitting flat or knitting in the round, hopefully some of these tips will be beneficial to you. I actually knit in the round for the most part. Uh, try to eliminate as many seams as possible. That's just the way I like to do it. Some people don't like to knit in the round, and that's quite all right. Uh, but most anything that I'm gonna share can be adapted to either knitting in the round or knitting in the flat. So I'm gonna reposition my camera so you can see what I'm doing and uh, take it step by step and I hope you enjoy. And share with me if you've got some good tips. I would love to hear from, from you and uh, hear some of your tips that you're doing. So uh, let's take this journey together and here we go. To get started with my chimpanzee, I got into my stash of yarns and I actually have some uh, colors that really match pretty close to what the pattern shows. And so I thought, you know, I'm just gonna for once kind of do it pretty close to the pattern. I don't always do that. But I thought these colors were so great and I just happened to have um, these in my stash and they match pretty close so I've got them all together so I know what I'm going to be working with when I get get down to the clothes and for the body uh, I've got the gray and the beige tone that pretty well matches what the pattern is is calling for and these are the um, stone wash sheep G's and river washed uh, sheep G's. So that's what I'm going with. Set my colors aside. I already have knitted uh, a leg and an arm, uh, but so I have one of each to so kind of speed up the process. But I'm actually going to start out with the leg and I get the leg and the arms all done before I start the body. That's my number one tip. I get them all ready to go so I can knit them in when I have the right, uh, when I'm at the right spot on the, on the body. So I'm going to knit though a leg with you and an arm step by step. So I'm going to set these aside. And the very first thing we start out with is the tan for the foot. And because I knit in the round, I'm going to show you how I do it so I don't have a, a seam here. Um, and I'm going to show you how I do that. Uh, I wished I could set this up <laughs> so I could be sitting in my recliner chair where I do all my knitting because it's just so easy. A little more restricted when I'm having to stay within the video camera. So um, invariably it feels awkward when I'm holding it out here in front of me rather than when I'm, you know, totally at ease in my recliner. If I could figure out a way to do that, I would, but I know the bar the dogs will bark and, and it would just not be good. So I've got my yarn ready to go. Uh, I will show you real quick. My sister experimented and made this really nifty little yarn holder. I know they have some really cool ones and I actually was even using a metal bowl, which works. But what I like about this is if I'm gonna take my knitting with me someplace, this just goes in my knitting bag so nicely. And uh, when the yarn is in there, it doesn't collapse 
that's important. I don't like to have my yarn in a, in a soft-sided bag because the restriction of the bag kind of collapsing around the yarn and this just keeps it all in one place. So she's going to make me another one that I can put uh, two skeins in but this really works and she's going to make it a little bit taller but I love this soft-sided carrier so that's just my latest little thing. So I've got my yarn, got my needles, I like to use the Addy Flexi Flip. I like making the body out of a, a 2.5 and then I go up uh, one size to a 2.75 for the clothes. And that seems to work for me and I use the same needle all the way through on the body. I don't change and I don't change needle size when I'm making the clothes either. I have found that this combination of 2.5 for the body and 2.75 for the clothes works really well. The other thing that I have handy is my um, stuffing uh, that I, I stuff my little critters with and I talked about it um, I think the last time on the video and this is just uh, a filler. Um, a, Got it here in the States at Joann Fabrics. It's not expensive, uh, but you can stuff it pretty tight or you can leave it airy, whichever way you want to do it. But I find this works really well and I don't get lumps uh, in, in the arms and legs and body. It, it really uh, stuffs nice. I have a, <laughs> a chopstick that I use to kind of tamp it down with. So I have this ready to go and I'll show you why we need that right in the beginning because I stuff the leg as I go. So let's get started with the actual pattern. I'll get Now I have to tell you I uh, the first book is out in digital and so I bought that digital uh, version also and have it loaded on my uh, iPhone and I read most of my pattern off of the iPhone but her new book is not uh, put out in digital form yet uh, so I can't you know download it into my my Kindle uh, the same way um, well I, I could no, I can't get it on Kindle yet, but what I do is I have a scanner program on my iPhone so I can actually scan this page and do it page at a time. And that's what I'm doing right now because I really do like working off of my iPhone rather than having to manage uh, the bigger book. But for right now, this is where we are. And um, I I'm going to go to where it says the legs and it says work as the standard uh, leg with the contrasting foot and so we're going to find that and I'm making this real basic I've had some very basic questions and I thought okay I'm going to I'm going to do this uh, just step by step as to how we would do it so for you knitters that have knitted a lot of these critters if you're watching uh, bear with me because I am trying to make this uh, for those that have not done a lot of the animals or any and um, just trying to make it helpful to how to not be overwhelmed because uh, there are a lot of instructions in this book and so how how do we get started right so we are going to excuse my little um, <laughs> post-it notes which I love having post-its post-it notes ready because they help me stay on track when I'm looking looking at the book when I load the pattern onto my iPhone I, it gives me the option that I can highlight the row that I'm working on and so that keeps my I don't lose my place in the pattern if I have to lay my knitting down so when I'm working in the book I use these little post-it notes because they really help me uh, so the very first thing uh, we're going to do is the uh, contrast foot and she shows a pattern a picture of it up here and it's photo six and it's where the foot uh, just coming up to the beginning of where the ankle would be is done in tan so that's the contrast foot picture and it says um, as standard legs uh, plain but uh, 
but cast on and work rows 1 through 20 using yarn B. Well, my tan color here is what yarn B is. And so we're going to cast on uh, this tan for this part of the foot and then we'll be going over to the charcoal gray once we get up to row t through row 20. So we're going to do the cast on and I'm going to show you how I do it without doing a seam. And I have done this demonstration before but like I said I'm doing a complete critter here. and. Um, you know, we, it may have to be chopped up into maybe three videos, but we'll see what how the time goes. If I didn't talk so much, maybe that would help. So I'm going to cast on 20 stitches. And I do that with using my two needles. I use the flexi flips, as I said. And I'm going to put my yarn right between the two needles. And I'm going to do what I call a figure eight cast on. I'm going to get it up here so hopefully you can see and I'm going to go well first of all let me back up here so the loop is over the bottom needle okay the top needle just lay right down on top of it I'm holding it together here with my two fingers my thumb and my index finger so I'm going to bring up from the bottom and bring in between the two you know, uh, needles over the top come back down between the two needles I'm now, my yarn's down here at the bottom. I'm going to come back up over the top, back through the center of the two needles. Now I'm down here at the bottom. I'm going to come back through the middle. So just think figure eight. And I'm going to do that until I have 10 stitches on the top needle. And you can see here it can go pretty fast. So let's stop and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight. I'm counting the top. Eight, nine, ten. Count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have to bring my needle, or my yarn, excuse me, back up between my needles again because I'm going to knit across the top needle. And so I need my yarn up here at the top. So I'm going to pick my yarn up, ready to knit. I, by the way, knit continental style. So if you don't, you'll have to adapt how you hold the yarn. Some people throw the yarn. Uh, I do continental. So my bottom needle down here, because I have this lovely little cable here, I'm going to pull it to where this bottom row of stitches is at the cable. Now if you're using two circular needles, uh, you can do the same what I'm doing here if you have two short circular needles. I have a set of these flexi flips and so uh, that's what I'm working with. So now I've got my cable here. Now why do I put the cable here? Because it's littler around. It gives me some slack in here. Makes it easier to pick up these stitches on the needle. And so I'm going to knit across. So here's my first stitch. Knit it. Slip it off the top needle. We're going to knit right straight across all ten of those stitches. Now I am with my left hand I'm holding these cast on stitches with my thumb and my middle finger securing them as I'm knitting across so they don't get too loose and want to slip off. Just keep knitting right straight across almost there. I could say if I was sitting in my recliner chair it would be so much easier to do this. Okay, that's the top 10. Now my needle is 
out. Lay it down there for a second and I'm going to flip this like a pinwheel. So now the stitches that were on the bottom are on this top. The stitches I just knitted are down here on the bottom needle. So now my top needle I'm going to slip back here so I can knit those and the bottom stitches down here I'm going to slip to where the cable is just to give me a little bit of looseness. Now if you count, there's going to be 11 stitches. We had 10 here, but we get an extra one on the because uh, how we have to bring the yarn from the bottom up to start knitting. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, trust me, there was this one. <laughs> it slipped off when I flipped it. And we're just going to get rid of that little stitch that was there so that we have 10 stitches on the top, 10 on the bottom. So now we're going to knit across that bottom row of stitches that's now on the top just like we did on the previous needle. We're knitting across and what this is doing it's going to let us knit this foot in the round with no stitches on the bottom. So there's no sewing up on the bottom. Okay, we'll do back to the beginning. Now, when I turn this open, this part right here between the two needles is what would have been your seam that needed to be sewn up after the whole foot was made. But we just knitted it in the round and now we're going to knit this whole foot in the round. The pattern calls for it to be knitted flat, which I say frequently you can do. I have done it. I just don't like doing stitches, so I've any time I can eliminate it, I do. That's just person personal preference. So over here at our pattern, We've actually done what it said, which was cast on, and then row one said purl. Well, that's that row that we just went around on, that was actually your first row. And when you knit in the round, we will not be having any purl rows. Our rows are all going to be in the round unless we actually want purl stitches someplace to show but in the legs and the body, we, we don't. So we've actually done, if you look at your pattern, we've done row one and now we're ready to do row two. And that's knit one, make one, and knit six. So we're just gonna look at that part of the pattern. So all of this from here all the way around is row one, not just your top needle. We have to go all the way around the 20 stitches for the, to complete row one. Now we're ready to do row two. And um, it starts out with a knit one and a make one. So I'm gonna do my knit one, and then we're gonna do a make one. As I said before, holding my hands out in front of me and keeping them in the camera shot I'll try to do better. Uh, <laughs> a lot of things to think about. I'm not real efficient at that yet. So now we're ready to do the make one and there's a couple of ways to do it. You can pick up the bar right here that's between the two stitches uh, and or you can uh, make what I do. I pick up the leg of the stitch right below the live stitch. Um, Cat Brody who was a well-known uh, sock knitter. I learned from watching her and knitting her socks, uh, she would call the live stitch on the needle the daughter, and then she would call the, the stitch right below that the mother. And actually she goes one further, the third one down is the grandmother. But it, it's a silly little story, but it actually helps me remember. So I'm gonna pick the right leg up of the mother, which is the stitch right below the live stitch that's on the needle. 
and um, I pick it up and I'm going to knit into right into that. My little marker is kind of in the way here. But I'm going to knit into that right leg. That's what's going to make my first make one. And now this is still the live stitch is right there. That will be my next stitch to knit. The other way when you pick up the bar, that um, make one works really well for like if you're doing a raglan sleeve where you actually it will make a hole in your knitting it will leave a little opening and so for the feet and the legs and all of the body when I make one I do this method of knitting into the leg of the mother stitch so now the next part of our pattern there after the knit one make one is to knit six so we're gonna do that one two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm not going to knit every row like this with you, but I am doing this row to show you uh, just how I do it in the round and then uh, I'll be knitting some more of the foot and come back at the next change in, in the pattern. So still on row two, I've knitted six. Now we're going to do a knit two make one. So now here's the knit two. We're going to make one. So I'm picking up the leg of the mother and I'm putting it up on my needle. going to knit into it. That's my make one. Now it says knit two to do that twice. So here's one. Now this is what I wanted to show you. We're still on row one, but I'm having to turn my work and now go back this way. That's still all part of row one. And I've knitted one on that second knit two make one. So here's the second stitch and it's a make one. So I'm gonna pick up, stay in the camera, Linda. Sorry about that, folks, bear with me. So now I'm going to pick up the leg of the mother, knit into it. So that's my second knit to make one. And then the pattern says knit eight. So we're gonna do that. five, six, seven, eight. And now the that last thing we do on that row two is make one, knit one. So I have one stitch left, which is what I'm supposed to have. So I'm gonna pick up the um, leg of the live stitch, the mother, put it up on my left needle. Now I'm going to knit into it. There's my make one. And the last thing you do is knit one. Now we will have 24 stitches on our needle. And going all the way around is one row. And I've put a marker in to denote what is the, what's the beginning end of this whole thing and so my marker tells me I'm back to the beginning and then we're to do what row three says purl row well because we're knitting in the round we'll never do a purl row uh, completely in the round now there is one place up in the body where it has you mark where the legs go and that is you do want to I think it's 10 stitches there that will be purl stitches but all the rest of this is uh, I'll knit. So now we go, we're going to go to row three. I'm going to continue knitting and doing the increases as the pattern says until I get all the way up here to where we're, we're through this color. And before I close this up, I will come back on in the video and show you what we do there at that transition. But I think all the rest of this, just follow what the pattern says. It's, it's uh, 
you know, increases, make ones, and then you knit and you make some more. You can see right here on the point of this toe, here and here, that's where the make ones come in. It makes a little little shape there, a little design. And so that's what you're going to be seeing. So I'm going to go and do that and then I will be coming back. And this is what the bottom of your foot will look like. This is the beginning of it right here. So see, we eliminate any seam here. It just looks like it's been knitted right straight across. I think that's pretty pretty terrific and because it's just so nice and smooth. So I'll be coming back and uh, finishing up this foot. Uh, so hang tight. You, If you're knitting along with me, uh, just keep on knitting according to what the pattern says and uh, it's going to come out great for you. I'm now ready to start row 20. And right after row 20, we will be changing uh, to our charcoal, our charcoal gray. I'm going to knit row 20 with you. Um, and the very first thing it says is knit 11. And then this is where it goes into knit 8. You do uh, SSK and knit 2 together uh, and knit 8. And you cast off these 18 stitches as you work them. Well, we're going to knit that without casting them off. That's very different from how the pattern is written. But we're going to do the knit part just exactly as it says. Oh, and I have to correct. I think I showed you just a, a second ago and I said these stitches right up here in the front of the foot is the make ones. Well, that's not the make ones. That's the SSKs and the knit two togethers. The make ones are, are right back here and a little more subtle. You can't see them. So I thought, well, I better, I better clean that up just a little bit. All right, so we're going to uh, do the knit 11, which that's, we're gonna do it just like the pattern says for that part. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And I did, by the way, uh, my end uh, piece that I started with right here, uh, before I got too far, I did secure it, uh, wove the ends in there a bit so that uh, it is secure here. And um, I just didn't cut it off very, very short and just tuck the rest of it down inside. Okay, so that's my 11. I'll go back to that just a moment. The reason why I went ahead and secured it is pretty soon we're going to be closing this up and it's <laughs> nigh on to impossible to weave your ends in and, and secure where you, where you started knitting uh, if you get too far up the foot. So that's why I um, did it and you'll want to do the same. So now I have 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, now the next thing it says is uh, knit 8. And so we're going to knit that 8. And um, I did not bring in any uh, um, markers, st stitch markers, but I'll remember 8. Uh, there's a reason why. Put put a marker on your needle right at, at the eight. Uh, it'll just help you for uh, in a few minutes. We're gonna gonna come back to that. So then we're going to, and this is where we would be knitting eight and casting them off at the same time. We're gonna knit them and not cast them off. Trust me, this works. So here's our next eight. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
okay? And then it says SSK, and then knit two together. Now, I've had a number of questions, people saying, oh, the, the stitches are not laying right. You have to do your SSKs correctly, and you have to do your knit two togethers correctly. You can't just forget doing an SSK and do it as a knit two together. So for, the, for those of you that are not very familiar with it, some of you are, an SSK is slip one, knit the next stitch, and take that slipped stitch and bring it up over the top of the knit. If you look down the row, they're all lined up like little soldiers because I've done them all the same direction. So that's why don't try to do an SSK here sometimes and a knit two together sometimes you'll not it will not look nice and you'll not be happy with your work so that's very important to absolutely follow the pattern in that regard as she has written it now it says knit two together so i've done this side i've turned my work and this is the knit two together and sometimes for me, knit two together feels a little awkward. So what I do to loosen it up just a little bit, I, I put my, my needle in through the two stitches and I just give it a little tug. I stretch it out just a little bit because I have to go in from this direction to do my knit two together. And if this is really tight, then it's kind of hard to do, even, even with my needle down here on the, on the cable, that's not really affecting these two stitches very much. So uh, by doing that, I just put my needle in those two stitches together that are gonna get knit together. I tug on them a little bit. Trust me, they go right back into place. So now I put my needle in from left to right. I'm gonna knit those two together. Slip it off. And these are all facing in the, the angle of the stitch is all going in the same direction. So that's why it's very, very important to do an SSK consistently where the pattern says and a knit two together consistently. Otherwise you will be very unhappy and that's extremely important up on the heads. I think that's why some people struggle a little bit uh, with the heads until they get it down uh, what is an SSK uh, or what's a make one left and a make one right. Those are critical that you really get that in your brain as to what direction you knit if you're knitting in the front of the stitches or if you're picking up and knitting in the back. We'll talk more about that when we get to the make one left and right. I'm just saying you have to do these little critters um, make the stitch the kind of stitch that she tells you to make uh, most important okay so now we've done our knit two together and then it's knit eight so we're going to knit our eight and like I said these would normally be cast off if you were doing them in her method but we're not doing that we're going to eliminate having to sew up a seam so this is my eight. There's um, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I'd have brought in a marker, I would have put one on my needle right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I always love it <laughs> when my stitch count comes out correctly. Now this is where this is going to seem kind of silly or odd to you i'm not going to actually knit all the way down here i'm going to leave those 11 stitches right there and i'm going to take another needle this is where these flexi flips work so well but you can do it with a couple of shorter uh, circular needles uh, or if you're using uh, double pointed uh, straight needles double pointed you can do this the flexies are just they're flexible <laughs> but you can actually you absolutely can do this with uh, a set of double pointed needles 
So those eight stitches that we knitted over here on this side, I'm gonna slip them off so that I have 11 stitches on this other needle. So let's slip the eight off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I have eight stitches here on this needle, eight over here, 11 and 11. So there's four needles in, involved right there. And I've got my yarn right here in the middle. Now, that this is how I do it. But you can uh, knit all the way down here, um, but you're going to have to, uh, one way or the other, we're going to add, uh, bring in a new, um, I have to cut this and start a new start starting point down here. This will make sense to you, hopefully, in a minute. So these were the stitches. These eight were the ones that were supposed to be cast off. This is where our seam would be. Well, I'm gonna do the three needle bind off and omit doing a hand sewn seam. These 11 stitches over here become the leg. So how do we do a three needle bind off? It's actually pretty easy. Uh, so what I do is I turn this inside out. If I didn't, and I just did a three needle bind off from the top side here on the right side, you would have a little ridge and, and you can do that. But to me, I like the beauty of this seam right here being uh, just nice and smooth. There's no ridge. It, you obviously see the line where the seam uh, is, but there would be a ridge uh, right there if we didn't turn this inside out. So we're gonna turn it inside out. There's our inside out. And if you haven't secured your yarn, this is a, the last moment you'll have to secure the yarn where, where we started. This is already secured, I just didn't cut it very short. So here's our live yarn that we've been knitting with. And I'm going to use it to do our three needle bind off. Just ignore these little needles here. This is the one reason why I like the flexi flip so well. I can just pull them down like that and kind of get them out of my way. And I want my two needles that have the eight stitches on it. That's what we're going to be working with right now. I want those two points to be even with each other. And I'm going to take, I, I have two sets of this size flexi flips and I loved them so much I knew I would use them a lot and so I that's why I can get another needle out um, and I'm, I'm glad I made the investment it is an investment okay three needle bind off we're gonna knit the stitch the first stitch on the right needle to the first stitch on the left needle so we're just gonna go in, pick up that first stitch on this right needle, or the one that's closest to me, go over and pick up the stitch on this needle over here, the furthest one away, and I'm gonna knit those two together. Now, some people have a hard time doing this, and this is where sometimes I use my little, my little tool, my little crochet hook, and I use it to go through there and pull it through. You can do that. So I have them knitted together. I'm gonna to slip them off just like that. So now I have one stitch over here on my right needle. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna go and knit the next two stitches together. Pick the first stitch up, pick up the one on the needle furthest from me, knit those two together, pull that yarn through, slip it off of the left-hand needle. Now I have two stitches over here on my right needle. I'm just gonna use the point of one of my needles. That first stitch we did on this right needle, we're gonna slip it over the top of this second stitch that we did. So just using the point of one of my needles I'm knitting with, I slipped that and now I have one stitch on my right needle. You now have cast off one stitch. 
So we're going to do that again. We're going to knit the first two stitches together. Pull your yarn through, slip those stitches off of that left hand needle, use the point of one of your needles here, get that first stitch and pull it over the top of the second stitch. Now we have, we're back to one stitch on this needle and this is our cast off part right here. So we're going to do that all the way through these eight stitches. And it becomes pretty easy. I have used this three needle bind off in actually in doing um, side seams on a sweater. Just a number of different places I have used this three needle bind off and I love the end result really well. Been very, very happy with it. Um, so we're just going to keep doing this. This is why you have to have an even number of stitches on both of these two needles to make this work. Okay. Slip them off of the left hand needle. Pull that first stitch over the top of the second one and you can see you can see your bind off from the inside uh, it's nice and smooth and you would have that which is not bad you would have that little cabling on the top of your foot um, which it's nice and smooth uh, it's just going in a little bit different direction and uh, but you would get that if you didn't turn your foot inside out. I just choose to turn it inside out, but you don't have to. I'm just, I'm just saying this is what I do. Okay, let's get this next one going here. Bound off, slipped off of the left needle, slip that first stitch over the second stitch. Take the next two stitches, Oop, pulled it out faster than I wanted to, but I'll slip it right back in there. Slip that first stitch over the top of that one, take my last, knit it, slip my first stitch over that second stitch, and voila there we have and see it makes a makes a little bit of a ridge and that's going to be on the inside we are going to pull this yarn through and I'll grab <laughs> well I didn't bring a pair of scissors easily here it is okay cut my yarn Finish pulling our yarn through, and now we're going to turn it back inside, outside, the inside out, and there is our, get my needles out of the way, there is our seam. Nice and smooth, nice and snug, and we will start, and that's all nice and tidy. I do have a little piece of the, one of the little threads of this yarn I'll clip that off and it'll go away and it's not going to hurt anything that I snip that one little teeny thread so now we're ready to change colors and uh, knit up the leg and I have close by my stuffing because as soon as I get my charcoal gray on here uh, I will start stuff, stuffing this foot and we're gonna we're gonna go through that whole process so you're you're gonna see it right now um, now what we do end up having is if you look at your foot real close this is the front part of the foot and um, get that little yarn I'm gonna well I don't I want to weave it in so I'm not quite ready to uh, now tuck it in there for a minute. I want to secure that. That was from the end here. Um, what I do is we have this space. That's what I'm trying to get to. 
and I pick up three little stitches right across here and I will end up getting rid of those three little stitches because we want 21 stitches coming up the leg because remember we have 11 on each side and so that's how this um, foot was made was with the 21 stitches the leg and so we're going to do the same of course with this one because we have to have our legs match so I'm going to show you how I pick up the three little stitches right here to close this little gap that um, gets gets made and I'm going to reach over here and turn my computer on flip timed out on me so I'm going to pick up now my charcoal gray and I'm just going to start here you know I could start back here I could start over here on this side um, it really doesn't make too much difference. I, I guess I wouldn't start here uh, because we're going to be picking up some stitches right here and it's going to be better, easier to have good tension if you either start here and work around this way or start right here at the very back of the foot. Um, this foot I started here in the front and I'm going to do the same on, on this one here. So how we do that, I don't tie a knot or anything. That yarn's going to get secured down in there. I just uh, kind of hold it with my fingers and I make a little stitch here, get it going. And that's my first knit stitch. And we're going to just knit all the way around here. I want to show you about picking up. I have found three stitches work. And then in the next two rows, I end up across the front um, doing uh, knit twos together and I get rid of those three stitches but it just fills in that little gap and it makes it uh, nice and tidy so we just keep going around and uh, this is the starting of the leg of course and if you were just doing a solid color um, there where we uh, started the charcoal you would just use whatever you're you started out with if you were just doing a plain um, colored animal but the um, chimpanzee is done in two tones and so that's why we had the color change but uh, it's just the same process doing a plain colored leg so now I'm at the point that I need to pick up uh, I suppose you could do it with two stitches but I just found that three worked really well so I'm, I take another needle actually so you can see here um, so I've got this little space uh, to the one side of where our seam is and then I have the seam and then this other space. So that's why I have determined that three stitches works really well. You might experiment with it and say, well, I could close that up in two stitches. And that's fine. Just whatever you do uh, for the one leg and foot, you want to duplicate for the other. So I picked up just one of the legs of one of the stitches. I'm going to pick right up in the middle of what was the seam and one more uh, leg there's my three stitches here's my yarn and we're just going to knit across and I will tell you the decreases I make are going to be here at the front ankle I'm going to do the decreases in the same place that I I picked up these three extra stitches you know I think not to be afraid to kind of experiment with your with your knitting if you make a change to a pattern always write it down don't think you're going to remember because you're going to lay your work down uh, and come back to it and you're going to think oh now what did i do or you come back to it a week or two later and it's you don't remember uh, i know that from experience <laughs> and so i've learned that when i change a pattern uh, I have a little book that I kind of just keep track of some changes that I made. So now I've, I've knitted into those three stitches that I picked up and I'm just going to continue to go on around. Now this first stitch 
was on where we added yarn. So I'm going to tug my tension back up so that stitch does not get too big. And we're just going to knit on around. So now we're at 24 stitches instead of 21 and we're going to bring it back to the 21 stitches. I love not having a seam to sew up on these legs and, and I know there are a number of people that would rather knit flat, we've talked about this before, and they don't mind sewing up the seam and I say do what, what you enjoy doing. Um, that's the beauty of knitting. There really are uh, a lot of options. Find out what works best for you. And, you know, if you're just struggling with something particular, um, you know, ask somebody. Maybe there's another way of doing it or they, are, they can help you with your technique or how you're holding your yarn. I do know with these little critters, keeping a good tight tension uh, I feel is really important and the reason why is when you go to stuff these little critters you want to, I anyhow, want to get a nice uh, uh, firm, not, not hard, but firm stuffing and so if your knitting is nice and uh, not overly tight but uh, tight enough that you can stuff up against it and it's not going to just all stretch out on you. I think I uh, said in one of the other episodes, one of the very first ones I knitted, what I did out of wool, Jameson and Smith, because I had a lot and I just wanted to try making one of the critters to see if I liked it. And um, I liked doing it, but when I went to stuff it, because the wool has so much give to it, uh, it's really soft and uh, it's, so I all wool unless it's a washable wool uh, probably is not the best choice in yarns this is a cotton blend and uh, y you can get a nice type so I just went I'm right where those three stitches were I knit the first two together and now I'm at the second or the, this would be the third stitch of that um, those three and well first of all I'm going to pick my needle back up that would be good and I've got one stitch over here on this this little needle right here and that's like awkward to work with right so I'm going to actually slip it over here onto that other needle and just get rid of it so now I've got that third stitch that we added is right sitting right there and I'm going to knit it together just uh, I did both of them uh, put my needle through the two of them and knit it together so it's just nice and flat so now I've gotten rid of two of the three stitches next time I come back around right there in the center I'm going to knit those two stitches together and we'll be right back on track and it will all look really really good and um, you know just make sure any of your loose ends your tension is is nice and tight and I'm going to do a lot of knitting around actually these legs now that I've done them as many times as I have they actually go pretty fast first couple of times I thought I would never get through knitting a leg and arms and there was two of each of course and um, but now I don't I kind of dreaded them at first and now I don't once you get in the hang of it uh, they actually go together pretty fast so I'm just gonna keep going around I want to show you that knitting those last that last um, get rid of that left third stitch that we added on and um, show you how easy it is and then I'm going to show you um, a little bit of uh, how I start stuffing and knitting at, and continuing to knit and stuff at the same time so that I'm not having to you don't have to finish the whole leg and then stuff it some people do that's fine I've figured out um, that I can stuff and 
knit at the same time. So here we are back now to the last stitch here that's on this side and I'm going to knit it to the first stitch over here on this needle and that's right dead center of the ankle and so I'm gonna I'm gonna I have to slip one stitch off one way or the other so I'm gonna slip it off of that needle and I'm gonna put it over here onto this needle so I can get a nice knit two together it, it wouldn't have been it would have been really awkward trying to pick up a stitch on each side and get a good tension we would have done it like what we did here but this is this is a little bit more critical of an area so I just slipped the two so they were on the same needle and knit them together okay I am now back to 21 stitches and I will show you here in just get a couple more done and there we we have a nice well it'll show better when I get a little bit more knitted but we have a nice tight um, work right here at the ankle like it came out here and it's it's all nice and tucked in there nice and tight and we're I am going to continue to knit to the end of this because I want to show you how I do my stuffing. It's no super big magical thing, but I'll just um, show you that part since I'm trying to make a video that's really complete and showing you um, really all of the steps that we face. Uh, and some of you may have come up as I've said earlier with some other ideas of how of what you do I'm certainly open to them I you know it's great to share I think we can learn from one another and um, I certainly have so I'm gonna now get my my stuffing and uh, show you what I do next had to run and get my chopstick. <laughs> this was a chopstick I actually picked up in China when my husband and I a few years ago uh, got to make a nice trip to China, Quinming, and uh, I've discovered it's the best tool for stuffing. It has a, a little bit bigger uh, end um, on, on this one end and it's just perfect probably didn't really need it for this part of the foot yet but once I start getting up the leg very far that chopstick <laughs> works well so my stuffing I take it I kind of pull it apart a little bit I, I don't spend a lot of time I fluff it up a little bit I think that helps uh, not get uh, lumps and I just take a small piece now I'm using my finger not so much the chopstick um, and really tap it into that to that toe and because this is nice and tight knitting you can get a good um, you know a good um, feel for how the stuffing uh, is you don't in my opinion you don't want it too sloppy and um, it's amazing how much filler stuffing you actually can put in these little critters and uh, even though there's a lot in the bag when you get it it's uh, it, it is kind of interesting how much these little guys can can take um, so I just keep you know stuffing and because uh, I want that foot to really hold its shape I think that's important and um, you, don't have, you don't have to be too fancy with this at all and now I'm going to kind of aim for the heel all of that other was more I concentrated on the toe part and that's probably all I'm going to put in for right now I get it just past where my knitting is and um, 
Later, if I feel like it needs to be moved around, you know, I just take a knitting needle and get in there and you can move this stuff around. But I just start knitting and that doesn't bother me to have um, stuffing in, in it uh, as I work with it. And um, the more you do it, the more comfortable, you know, you get with it. And so I just go back. Now we are knitting. For how many rows is it here? Well, this was row 21. And we're going to add 68 more rows. And so I don't make a mark. <laughs> Some people make a mark on each time they've gone around. I don't do that. I have discovered that I know this is this is row 21 right here where the color change is and I just start counting up in the stitch I, I really use the point of my my knitting needle to uh, and I move it from one stitch to the next when I count so I actually start my counting from the color change and so I just knit away I don't worry about which row I'm on at this point in time because every row is the same up and up to the second or right up to the very top and so I'll show you on this one here um, so I would this is 21 so this 21 22 23 24 25 so I literally take the point of my needle and I find if I try to just move my thumbnail up invariably uh, something's going to happen and I, I get get off but I find actually using the point of my needle to go into each stitch helps me get an accurate count and it's pretty fast and easy. Uh, some people like, you know, keeping a little check mark on each row that they do and uh, on a separate piece of paper and whatever works for you. So now I'm going to go about knitting up the leg on this one and um, and then we'll be ready to start the hand and uh, then on to the body. So I will be shutting down my video for a little bit. Maybe I'll get it done this evening yet. And uh, I am anxious to get this first episode uh, about the chimpanzee uh, posted on YouTube. And so I'm working away diligently. So I'll be back in with, uh, you won't know what <laughs> how long I'll be gone for, but uh, I'll be back to finish up this video, at least the legs. I have finished knitting up my leg. I need to put a little more stuffing in it. So we'll do that right now. And I don't put the stuffing all the way up to the very, very top. I, I leave a little room there um, so that it uh, maybe down about oh a half an inch or so from the top um, just because I want to be able when I knit this in I, I want to have it so it uh, is easy to work with and it fits into the body well so we'll just see how much of that actually goes in and at this point I pretty well can do it with my fingers um, use my little chopstick here and um, so like I look at this and I see well I've got kind of a bump there this is where I love the end of this little and you can use any kind of a knitting needle or a sewing needle to kind of just move it around and get it um, to where it feels like you know that's that's the way it should be so now I have half of my stitches on uh, the front needle, half of them on the back needle. And at this point in time, I'm going to just put it on, instead of leaving the stitches on that needle or put it a regular needle holder, I'm going to actually put it onto a, a waist yarn, one for the front and one for the back. That way it's all set up and ready to knit into the body when I get to that location on the body, which is, you know, not very far up the body and you knit 
the legs right onto the project. And so there's one waist yarn, pull that through. And just because this could get knocked around a little bit before I, um, I'm gonna tie a knot in that. And um, just so I don't accidentally pull it on through. I don't, I don't want to have that happen to me. And I will make sure before I start knitting this in, I want to make sure, and it looks like I have it off just a little bit, that I have the front 11 stitches and the back 11 that I really do have. I need to count and make sure my legs not twisted. Although when I look right straight up here, that comes right out to the center. So I think we are okay. And I'll get another waist yarn for the back. And then it's all set up half and half, ready to, ready to go when I'm at that point of the body. And then my needles are off of this and I can use them for, I'm gonna start the arm. Um, show you how and that we're gonna do that right away here. I'm gonna get us started on getting the arm all done so that it also is ready when I get to that part of the body that I can just go ahead and knit the arms right in. And uh, so this is pretty easy to do. Um, I'm gonna tie that knot again so I don't accidentally pull it and uh, drop some stitches. That would not be, that would not be good. Okay, so we did this from the bottom up. Now the arms are just going to be the opposite. I'm gonna cut this, and I don't leave a huge long piece here because I'm not gonna be using this yarn to knit it into the body. I will be using the skein of yarn that actually I'm knitting the body with. So I'll just leave myself a generous piece to weave in there. But now we're gonna go on to doing the arm. And I'm gonna get over here. Oh, the right arm and the left arm. So uh, I'm gonna be making the right arm. And I'm gonna do what's called the provisional cast on. And what that does is it lets me have, in fact, I'll show you the arm that I've already done. Here it is. Here's a waist yarn that I've used up here to put my stitches on. When I unravel this, because I crocheted this, I'm gonna show you how I do that then my live stitches are right there and ready to knit into the body. So I'm gonna show you how we get that started because you knit from the top down. I tried to come up with the bottom up, getting this little thumb and it was hurting my brain to try to figure that pattern out backwards. So I thought, we'll just do the provisional cast on and then that solves the problem. So the provisional cast on actually is crocheted. So we're just going to do a little slip knot here. You can use a crochet hook. I'm actually using this little tool that we have for for uh, making you know repairs or whatever we use it for on our knitting. So I did this on I think actually my last video it might even be on there but I'm going to do it again. Sorry for my dog Roy barking. He's a six month old puppy so he's just full of himself so okay here's my crochet hook I have the slip knot on the crochet hook I have my knitting needle in my left hand and my yarn is going under my needle under the needle I'm gonna reach over the top of the needle and I'm gonna grab the yarn and we're gonna just like a single crochet crochet right into that. Let's do that again. I actually split that yarn, so I'm gonna fix that. I see some of these yarns split so easily, but it won't hurt anything. So now, yarn back behind my knitting needle, bring my crochet hook over the top, grab that. There's my next stitch on my knitting needle right there. Still have a slip knot or the, a stitch over here. So we're just going to keep doing that until we've cast on 14 stitches. So yarn behind my knitting needle, reach over the top, 
another stitch. It really goes pretty smooth. Now, no need to knit tight. In fact, you don't want to do this casting on tight. You want it kind of loose. I have a actually just a sock yarn. You could use a heavier weight yarn if you want to. I'm going to knit or crochet this on here loose enough that I'm not worrying about the tension of that. Um, you just want to have it on the looser side and not super tight. And uh, this is just a slick way to do these stitches. And so I said, I'm just double checking myself here that we're casting on 14 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will be 11, 12, 13, 14. Now let me make sure that I've done this correctly. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Perfect. And I have the one over here on my crochet hook. And we're just going to crochet a little chain right here. And that chain just secures our stitches, but it also lets me know what end of this provisional cast on when we get ready to uh, take it out. The end with the chain is the end to unravel because it won't unravel, your crocheting won't unravel from this end. It has to be up here from the end that you quit with. So we did that. I'm just going to pull my yarn through and now there's my 14 stitches. Don't mind that little um, piece hanging out there. It won't hurt a thing. It's going to go away in time. So there's our 14 stitches and we want to knit in the round. So I'm going to uh, get my yarn because right now it's in the flat and to put it in the round you can either use some small circular needles, several of them, or I, as I've said a million times, I work with the flexi flips and so I actually will work with three flexi flips. So I want to give myself um, a little bit of length here, but it doesn't need to be excessively long. And we're just going to knit this first row. And then every row after that is going to be knitted because knitting in the round, uh, it's all knit. But we're going to be joining it just like if you were... Um, well, if you're knitting a hat, for instance, and you join your yarn, it's just that this is a little itty bitty <laughs> short circle that we're going to be joining. And uh, but we're just going to knit right straight across. Well, maybe <laughs> if I <laughs> pick up my stitches correctly. Um, but because I my cast on is pretty loose. It's pretty easy to get my needle in there. There's no reason to have this uh, provisional cast on tight. There's every reason to have it not tight uh, because it's going to go away. The stitches I'm knitting with right now, those I want to have uh, according to your standard gauge. Those you don't want to make excessively loose. Those you want to be uh, the same gauge as the rest of the body is going to be. But you don't have to worry about that with the provisional cast on. Because it, like I said, it's going to go away at the end when we get this all done and right before we go to knit it into the body. So there's my um, knitted around, but now I'm going to put half of them. Let's take one, two, only got part of that stitch. Three, four, five, six, seven. So now I have half of my stitches back here and half of them up here. And now we are going to join 
our circle and it's just like with anything else you want to make sure that you don't have them twisted um, and by seeing that I've got all my green uh, cast on stitches down here I can tell I don't have a twist in any of that and um, so when my yarn is on this portion back here so I'll start knitting right through here and um, it'll connect it so I'll, I'm gonna go grab my knitting needle because I brought everything in here but one more knitting needle so I'm gonna pause this and come right back no matter how organized I try to be sometimes I just forget some of the most important necessary things but now I've got my knitting needles here with me and I don't want to be knitting with the tail I want to be knitting with <laughs> the yarn actually attached to the skein so this is the yarn I'm knitting with and here it is in my left hand and I'm going to uh, have the put these two together or con connect the two I should say so it's I'm connecting what's here in the back to these stitches here in the front I'm going to move this down so it's on my cable and knit into my first stitch here pretty simple <laughs> and I'm going to knit all the way across now that first stitch is going to feel a little loose so we're going to stop for a second I'm going to tug here I'm going to get a hold of where we started that yarn with this gray and I'm just snugging it up so it makes so I don't have a long uh, loop between what's on the back stitch or back needle to the front needle and I'm just going to continue to go around and um, technically this should be uh, row two of the pattern but I'm going to give myself there's a, a there's a purl row and that actually is the row that uh, well no I'm saying that all wrong we did the cast on and then this row is number one would be the purl row but instead of purling we're knitting and so this I'm actually on row one got myself confused there for a minute again so because we're knitting in the round we never have a purl row so we're just going around enjoying the fact that we're knitting and not purling although I don't mind purling but uh, just doing straight knitting is to me a lot faster and doing these legs and the body are the part that <laughs> you like to get through the fastest okay so I just transitioned from my front needle and now I'm going to the other needle and finishing up what would be row one and coming back over here to the beginning of my row and this is also where I will put a marker on so I don't get confused <laughs> as to now have I gone all the way around or just halfway around so now I've gone all the way around I'm back at the beginning and um, just that's exactly what I'm going to continue to do is just go around and around now I'm on row two and it is the knit one make one so let's do that always remembering for the first couple of rows to at this intersection where you're connecting the the uh, closing up the the circle um, to, to keep a good tension right there for especially for a couple of rows so that's my knit one and then it says make one so I'm going down into the mother pick up that leg I put it onto my left hand needle and I'm knitting in it that's my make one 
and now it says to knit two and we're going to do that six times and I don't think you need to sit and watch me do that. It's kind of boring, but I'm going to do exactly what it says in row two and then finish on with my arm. And when I get to this point again where we transition colors and start to work on this thumb, I will come back uh, and do live video with you. So that's how I get my arm started and it'll be ready to knit into the body. And you can see on this, my stuffing, uh, it stops at about a half an inch from the top. That way, like the leg, um, it isn't bulky when I go to knit it into the body. It, it lets that kind of collapse and lays nice up against the body. Now this, different than the leg, I have to knit all of this before I can start stuffing. The leg, you can kind of, you can knit it as you go, or you can choose to do it at the end. I just like to stuff as I, as I go, uh, but obviously we can't do that with the arm. So there you go. I will be coming back when I get down to that part of the hand. Hope you're having fun if you're knitting along and um, or getting excited about maybe knitting one of these critters. I have just completed row 43 in the dark charcoal gray for the arm and now I'm ready to do the hand. So we're going to just simply start out knitting at the beginning of what would be row 44. And I don't tie a knot or anything in my yarn. I just start knitting uh, and I'll come, I'll do a row and then I'm going to show you how I attach or secure, I should say, my yarn, my new yarn. And um, not only my new yarn, but this end of the gray, we want to secure that and uh, without doing knots. So we're just going to continue to knit across as row 43 says to do. Um, and just keep remembering we're knitting in the round, so any purl row is really a knit row. And I don't think there's any uh, hard rows between here and the very end of the hand, so I don't think I'm going to do every row because we've certainly learned how to do knit twos together and some, you know, make ones. And so um, we'll not make a, put all of that on the video. Uh, and when you get through the very last row of the hand, um, you just cut your yarn and feed your end of the yarn in through that last set of stitches that's on the live stitches that are on the needle and and snug it up uh, often how we do uh, a hat when we finish a hat so there's not really any secret to that other than you do want to secure your yarn uh, at the end um, which uh, we can easily show you how I secure. Now I'm gonna, I've gone around once, but I think that's enough to show you how I secure these end pieces in. And so I'm gonna get my uh, needle here. And if you don't have uh, these needles that are for working with knitted, see it has that little uh, bend to the end of the point of the needle. It's dull. It uh, The reason why you want a dull needle, uh, sewing needle, is so that you don't sew into the yarn and spit, split your yarn. Uh, so this is made specifically for uh, working with yarn. And how I secure my yarn, I just start you see all of our little pearl bumps on the inside here? Well, you can go into those and it doesn't show on the front side. So uh, I just gently, well, in fact, I'm going to put my stitches down on the cable so it just ha is a little more relaxed. And I'm just going to carefully weave back and forth, just um, in and out, nothing big. Um, 
to go through those little pearl bumps and I go down, oh, I don't know, maybe eight, eight you know, stitches or so. Sometimes I skip one. I uh, don't have to. I only skip because <laughs> I just got one stitch over further. I don't try to intentionally skip, but it isn't necessary to hit every one. It's a good idea to go into the stitch itself and not into the yarn of the of the thread, in other words, not splitting your yarn, uh, just because you won't have anything restricting. So that's that's enough. I don't even cut it short. I just tuck it down inside because we're going to be putting stuffing in there. So I that just helps keep any little short ends from popping through if you leave a little space of yarn. And I'm going to do the same thing with this charcoal gray that we knitted the main part of the arm with. And, um, you know, so this is really no, doesn't take brain surgery <laughs> to figure this out. But I just go into that, what would be considered the pearl bump. And that little bend in the point of this needle just it is slick. It just helps you um, having that just a little easier to get in the stitches when it's uh, that bend. So that's all I do to secure the ends of my yarn. I just got through knitting the little hooded jacket for the um, chimpanzee, and there's a lot of color changes on that jacket. And uh, so I was kind of working on that in between, working on the body of the chimpanzee. Um, that's all I'm gonna weave in there. Shorten that up just a little bit. But that jacket, there's a lot of <laughs> color changes. And so there's a lot of ends to uh, weave in. But I, I like to do them as I, as I progress through a project so you don't get all the way to the end and then you have all these many, many uh, yarn ends to weave in. I do a lot of Fair Isle knitting and there's a lot of color changes in Fair Isle. And so uh, I try to do all of that, uh, tucking in those ends before I get too far in, down to the project to change to another color because I don't like getting all the way through a project and then have to go through. And I mean, on a Fair Isle sweater, if it's a lot of color changes, I mean, you could have 50 to 100, easy, uh, ends to weave in. And to save all of that to the end of a project, uh, for me, I don't like doing it that way. Some people actually do like doing it that way, and that's great. No, no criticism. Find what works for you. That's my motto. Find what works for you and, and do that. So now I'm ready just to continue on knitting the hand. There's some uh, knit twos together. There's some make ones, but nothing, nothing unusual. And then down here at the very end is where we're going to gather our stitches up with a, our yarn. And then you'll want to secure that yarn. And that's, that's the hand. So while I have my camera running, um, I'm actually going to uh, make this into two episodes because this one's getting kind of long. And so um, I'm going to get us started on the body in this episode and then uh, finish it on the very next episode. So I think this one is going to be episode 31. And so episode 32, I will be finishing the chimpanzee, his body and the head. And so um, so you'll know there'll be nothing in between the two. But I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get the body started. And then when I come back, it will be actually on episode 32. So I, like to knit my stitches on. Um, you can do the long tail cast on. We're casting on, I believe our pattern says eight stitches. I'll turn us over here to make sure I'm not telling you an untruth. Yes, for the body, we cast on eight stitches. So I cast on, as I said, in the knitting them on method. 
which for me, this works nothing wrong with doing a long tail cast on. I find either one works great. So there again, find out what you like to do best and then do that. Uh, but it doesn't, I haven't found a reason why one works better than the other. So I'm going to count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's exactly what I need. But now because I'm knitting them in the round, I need to get these on two stitches. So I'm going to take those last four stitches and now I have them on two needles. Okay. And here's the beginning of my work is right here. So I'm going to slip these down to the other end of my needle and you're going to just figure out how that works depending upon what needles you're working on. But I want to join these two together. You just want to make sure you don't have a twist in your cast on. I don't. And my yarn is back here on this back needle and I want to knit into this front stitch right here joining the front, joining these two ends together basically is what I will be doing. So I'm just going to come through, catch that. Sure. Let me do what I should have done, which is move that to the cable. So it's kind of now my needle's out of the way. That's what I love about these flexi flips. But if you're on a circular needle, you can do the same thing. So now that makes it easier to knit into that first stitch. And now I've closed up that straight cast on of eight stitches. I've made it so I can knit in the round. So all the way around uh, both needles is one row. So I'm knitting all the way around. So this is my first needle. And I've got to turn this now to knit on what was the back needle. Now it has become my front needle. And that will be the end of row one. And I will be putting a marker on this, um, the end of the first, or the beginning, I should say, of the first row uh, so that I don't get if you're just working on two needles and you think, oh my goodness, was that one round or did I just go halfway? Um, so it's important to know that you where your beginning is, is what I'm trying to say. And um, so that's all the way around, first row. And my marker actually is going to go right on this end down here. And that's row one. And I'm just going to continue to work all the way around uh, and going over both needles is one row. Just remember that when you're knitting in the round. So my marker is going to go here and I'm just going to continue on as the pattern says other than every purl row is a knit row just like doing the arm and the leg. Uh, and I'll be doing my increases and so I'm going to actually be a busy doing that all the way up to row, I believe it's row 17 where we have the purl 10 stitches to mark where the legs go and that's where I will actually be knitting my legs into the body and I'm going to have uh, the video on for that part so you can see how I actually uh, do that. I, I've got it on one other um, video that I've made and I think it's maybe episode 8 maybe, I'm not sure, or tutorial. It wasn't in an episode, it was a tutorial. But I'm going to be doing it again uh, when I'm up to that point and in 17 rows I'll be coming back but it will be on the next episode, episode 32. So I hope I haven't confused you too much. I'm trying to do a complete uh, 
critter with as many tips as I can give you that I've learned. I'm sure that there are more yet to be learned. Uh, and then after we do the body, I will go directly into the head of the chimpanzee. So we'll have it all together on two episodes back to back, which that makes total sense. Anyhow, I hope you're having a good time making these little critters. I certainly am. And um, just, you know, send me your thoughts and ideas if you come up, I've, uh, you know, with an idea that you think would be helpful. Um, I think that would be great to share. Um, I certainly haven't figured all of them out. I've tried to figure out a few. Um, and I will say now, after I get about halfway through the body, I will be leaving about a two inch gap in the back that will have to be sewn up later, but that will be for stuffing uh, our little chimpanzee. So at that section, this will be after I have knitted the legs on and up a few more rows, that I leave an opening. And of course, then that will be done uh, a knit a row and purl a row in order to get that opening that, like I say, that will sew up later. Uh, but all the rest of this is done in the round. So hang with me. Uh, and by the way, I have so enjoyed hearing from some of you. Uh, certainly many, many nice compliments and some good questions. And so I'm going to try to uh, hit all those questions that I've gotten along the way. And one of them actually, uh, several have asked that I put this all together uh, in in a one or two videos to do a complete uh, animal. So that's why I'm doing this uh, two sets of videos uh, back to back to get one complete animal. It's a lot of stopping and starting, I, I just have to say, um, but I'm enjoying it. And, um, you know, I don't claim to be a professional uh, but it's been kind of fun to do this and and uh, have the reach out from a number of you. And so it's great. It's It's been fun for me. So I hope you have enjoyed it. So we'll be coming back um, in episode 32. Thanks for joining me.